cherry. What is going on here? Get in. Window switches. Yeah. So guys. Welcome back to the channel. Today, as you can see from the title in this video, we're going to take some pictures of the 106. Now, bear with me. I am a complete amateur when it comes to YouTube and photography. So, we're going to meet up with another fellow enthusiast and actually compare notes as to what it's actually like to take pictures of cars. Now, today we're going to be using the 106. As I put that over there, lovely. We're going to use the 106 as a uh, display model, I think the word is. And we're just going to see how good we can get the pictures of it. Obviously, this car is very battered and beaten and stuff, so it'd be quite interesting to see what we can actually do with the photography. We're doing it at night though, so the first thing I need to do is go and wash this little thing down because I have actually been really, really enjoying myself in it. I've done. I would say 100 miles and it's done. I filled this up, it was 49 pounds to fill up. I have done what? Half a tank in 100 miles. Not bad considering I've been thoroughly enjoying myself. But onwards to the jet wash. Yeah. Also, if you haven't noticed, the car is sort of blowing a little bit. Sounds sick, right? Um, speed bumps, they broke it. It's fine, there's a new exhaust coming literally in two days. Speed bump. Oh, she didn't, didn't touch. Well done. It is pretty bad at the moment. It pops and bangs though, but it's definitely blowing. Here we are, jet wash life. The problem with this jet wash is, as the exhaust scrapes again, is this actual lip. See this? This car is low, but it's actually hilariously low considering what it is. Oh, we're not doing too bad though. Oh yes, we're in. Now we'll do this window up. Although this is very watertight in here, I still do not trust it whatsoever because it's French, obviously. Now, in all fairness, it isn't actually that bad, but I still want to make some nice, you know, content and some pictures. A cat has definitely been on this, look. Cat marks. So we'll uh, grab some of this. Obviously not a paid plug or anything, but Ezo Car Care shot down some bits for me to play with. So I'm gonna try out on the uh, 106, and give it a wash down. Right, applied. I'm gonna put a pound in, see how far we get, because I'm 100% cheapskate apparently. We'll go for, um, not the brush. How dare you do brush, that's not on. Uh, cold water gloss, high pressure. <laughs> Just like that, a whole three pound later, the car is all right, it's not too bad. Literally just jet washing it off using that iron out stuff. I found this there. Nothing crazy, but yeah, actually happy with that. I think it's photo worthy considering it hasn't been to the body shop or anything. Remember kids, never use this. This is the devil. We don't put that on any cars, even little <laughs> boxes like this. Three pound well spent if you ask me because was it shut properly. It's actually made the car quite clean really. If you keep on top of cleaning cars, it seems to be the way to go. And I'm no car cleaning expert. Oh, she's, did you hear that? Something ain't happy, it's wet. Yeah, if you keep on top of actually cleaning your car, it's very cheap to keep it clean. Literally three pound later, not using this horrendous brush, even though the paint is disgusting on this car. Let's go dry off. Look at that fellow Peugeot cherry red enthusiast in front of us. He knows. I do find though that sometimes the best way to actually dry a car off is actually giving it full beans somewhere. Tonight's photo shoot, we're actually gonna switch out, although you guys can't actually see it. Oh God! So I'm actually gonna swap out the B-Road bashing air freshener 
for a camo diamond cross. Obviously available at fydapparel.com. Three of these beauties for five English pounds. Oh, it smells so good in it, like bubble gum. So yeah, we're gonna put that on, ready for tonight's photo shoot. Actually dried it pretty well. Looks relatively clean, but we will see you guys once uh, the sun drops, because it's actually up at the moment. We'll do the night shoot. And just like that, it's not quite uh, night time yet, but we're with the awesome GTI. And we have, uh, would you like to shout out yourself? Sure. And he loves taking pictures, don't you, mate? You're all about the pictures. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do some light painting, darkness sort of stuff. Although my camera is actually doing quite a good job at, I don't know, bringing out the light um, in the situation right now. It's actually starting to get dark, isn't it, mate, if I'm quite honest? It's getting there. So we're going to start shooting the car. We're going to bring out some, what, lower aperture, are you saying? Lower aperture. We're going to lower the aperture. If you're a photographer, you know what you're talking about. I have absolutely no idea. I just press the auto bit on a camera. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like auto and then hope for the best see what happens but we're going to try and see what we can get out of this location in a cheeky industrial state see what the car sort of blends like in the light and with the sort of light that we have out and we'll um i'll put up on the screen what the actual pictures look like edited because i think that would be pretty cool as a complete amateur an amateur youtuber and an amateur photographer i'm interested to see how uh, how professional these pictures come out Right, so we're talking, uh, the, the gradient in this camera is horrendous, but if I can just show you guys, so CPL filter, so there it's on the sort of side of the car with the actual... Well, there it's on the front windows. windscreen. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll get you. So it's cut all reflections out of that. Okay. And you go to that and then, one, Oh, reflection. look at that. So it's just exactly the same picture, just yep. different filter, if that makes any sense. Oh, yeah. And then you said you are going to blend them both together to actually create... Yep a full shot we've moved to the rear end of the absolute weapon that is the 106 and we're doing some what manual focus on the rear end it's a bit too dark for the old auto so what selecting a part of the car manual focusing it so sharp and not out of focus see you know what i'm talking about don't i, I ain't got a clue mate so no no idea at all going through um each motion that we're doing with this sort of shoot of the 106 is sort of the idea is why i brought you guys along with me brought the camera along to sort of show that side of the automotive sort of social media and you know taking pictures of cars is hard so i always try and bring someone in that sort of knows way more than i ever would about this sort of thing yeah manual focusing you know light painting which we're going to get to in a minute we've got a really cool location for that basically background is isle of white when we were like 20, we're talking 10 years ago now, these cars were sending it up the dual carriageway. Now the dual carriageway is what? Like half a mile long. <laughs> it's not even that big. But we want to get a shot of the 106 at the bottom of the dual with the lights going up and down the dual carriageway, if that makes any sense. So I know you guys may not understand that. Well, there might be um, a certain location you remember from when you got into cars that people used to meet up in that necessarily don't anymore. That's that sort of location for me especially. And for this car, because that's sort of where I found it more than anything. I think the first night I ever saw this car was in that car park. So it'd be quite nice to get a nice picture in there, mate. Right, location number two for you guys. Now, if you're from the Isle of Wight, you'll know full well where I am. If you don't, you may have a place like this in your heart from when you were like 18, whatever age you were, when you became into cars, I'm going to say. Now, this is Curry's Car Park. This used to be the place to bring your car. Um, Fast Car Magazine came here once. It was completely packed. It was a mad, mad night. This was where I sort of grew up loving cars. Now, the best thing about this place was that Curry's Car Park here, it was always lit up. It was always someone in it. It was always really clean, really lovely place. And you had like, even JW Yorkshire was over here with all these lads doing like burnouts and stuff. This was like the place to be if you were from the Isle of Wight. 106 GTIs, there's actually a picture of eight of them rode up here. And this car was one of them, which is quite funny. That was probably, what, 11 years ago now. Now, interestingly enough, this is the only dual carriageway that's actually on the Isle of Wight. Now, this dual carriageway used to have people way before the police used to, t you know, tell people to go home and stuff. People used to drag race up and down here pretty much all night every night and i remember so fondly of actually standing sort of here 
with my Vauxhall Corsa that I had. Like someone's going out with Jewel there, giving it the big one. I remember like standing here and like not being able to own a 106 GTI, which is uh, annoying. Don't get me wrong, it was annoying at the time not being able to actually get one of these cars. But then seeing them absolutely being smashed up and down here all night was just like such a good feeling. And I like just standing here now reminiscing about this time and this car being in this car park with my mates all around me watching people say oh i've just put an exhaust on my car and an air filter and then going you know drag racing up and down the dual carriageway was like such good times from like my youth in cars so yeah to actually be here at the moment with this car shooting a picture of sort of this location doesn't mean a lot to my channel and like to other people maybe but people from the isle of Wight and people with uh sort of 106 gti's who grew up in the 2008 to 2010 sort of car scene down here will remember this spot really well yeah a lot of fun things happened here we're talking burnouts in sierra cosworth's over there uh i had an rvf 400 that we raced uh i think an rs turbo up the dual carriageway with way back when uh, 106 gti 205s in here uh i saw my first r35 gtr in this car park it was just so so good i remember way back my mate had a ps13 he drifted the whole way into here and skidded round and parked in the bay over there and that was one of the first drift cars i ever saw which was hilarious so yeah very long rant about how cool this car park is and i know it's really really sad at the same time but so much has happened in one car park so back to the whole photography thing of why i'm actually doing this video we've actually just set up uh, the camera again with a bit more of a wide angle lens we're gonna get the light bar painting bar thingy what do you call that what's what's the professional thing to say <laughs> A light stick it's a light stick there we go professionalism and um basically we're going to do one pass over the car to just show the camera how much we want to expose the car yeah just right. to see what it works with the main thing we're um anti working with is this light it's a little bit we're hazing up the side of the shot which is a little bit annoying but we'll do the first pass see how it comes out mate behind the scenes light painting in curry's car park on a 106 gti that is content you just don't see anywhere else isn't it look at that she looks so good here like whoa mate let's just go in on that shot oh my god hopefully my camera can pick it up and mate that picture came out i'll put it up on the screen for you guys i'll get i'll get that picture and actually put it up oh my god it looks unreal in person that's the, oh, like that looks that that's mate i'm um, just first pass i'm like gobsmacked that is so good for other people that want to know a bit more of the photography sort of side of it um this moment in time right now we're going with what a 10 second delay for you to get into position and then a 10 second so exposure see he knows he knows but yeah 10 second delay to get you in place 10 second time limit for the exposure and that's how we're sort of getting that shot another thing to point out is we've actually gone in and put the window down to try and get rid of the glare on that side of the car and it sort of worked doesn't it yeah which is quite nice yeah. so anti-glare in there winning here we go got a really long pass number two look at this trying to show you guys it's really really hard to actually show you what's going on here because of the light this g7x is pretty terrible for light so the idea behind sort of light painting or to my knowledge is getting as many shots as you can like we're doing now we're doing a uh, third or fourth shot something like that um on the actual car to get sort of highlighted points to go over the photo so you can use different layers of that photo and different photos to layer over to make a good photo does that make sense um, that sounds like it makes sense just passing over the roof now to get all like the roof lines and stuff in it yeah rear roof line there going in very good someone's sending it out the jewel what a lad someone is actually having it down the jewel carriageway right now who is it what is it this see, this is why we used to be here mate you'd hear something coming down be like what is that what is that what is that see this is why we used to be in this car park yes lad st shout out hurting it what lad another one go on lad yes this is exactly what i'm talking about where this car park used to be the one you should you should stand there all night having a laugh watching people absolutely annihilate their cars up and down the dual carriageway the funny thing about this location as well was that coming up this dual carriageway right you could start from the traffic lights down here and we would be able i'm not condoning street racing but as you would come all the way up here there's a uh 
curve in the dual carriageway just here and you would be able to hear whether someone had let off or not on the corner now if people let off that was like oh yeah i understand but if you had the absolute cojones to actually come up here and go around that top corner and then carry on we would be able to hear you all the way along the dual carriageway to the roundabout and then we would know full well how committed you were just going up here we are pretty much done didn't we mate so how many pictures have you taken that you're going to combine into one picture 35 35 so you'll overlay 35 images say yeah i won't necessarily use them all yeah but you've taken 35 to make sure you've got every single angle that you need like the pillars and the yeah. rear and the front and the you know the inside and that's now obviously if you're watching this video and you want to actually go and do this yourself please go and actually look up how to do it properly although i've titled this how to actually you know get your car to look like this there is a lot of professionalism that comes in with actually understanding your camera and you know frame rates and all that sort of stuff so please go and watch some other videos of light painting and stuff this is just a general summary of how to sort of do this sort of thing now I'm a complete amateur when it comes to everything and I will point that out every time we do a video that says how to in it but it's just always fun to bring you guys along especially and show you sort of the other side of car enthusiasticism is that a word something like that but it's always nice to bring the camera along show you guys exactly what's going on so from myself from the little GTI from you know Curry's car park and from Josh where are you mate there you go thank you very much Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. We'll see you on the next one as someone sends it up a dual carriageway. Absolute lad.